Hello there from Manila. So, I'm an American. I grew up in Texas. I've gone through the American educational system. Uh, I was taught, you know, about our founding fathers and our first Americans and how they overthrew the British and uh, we claimed our independence and you know, I was taught how our first Americans, our first pioneers expanded westward and you learn a very whitewashed version of how we displaced the Indians, the Native Americans and claimed all the land from, you know, from the East Coast all the way to California. Uh, you, you learn a version of World War II and how we came in and saved the day and defeated Hitler and the Japanese. A lot of times America is uh, portrayed as the hero, obviously, and uh, we're the good guys. Well, here in the Philippines, there's a story that I wasn't exactly taught in school. And uh, it's one of those stories you kind of have to do a little digging on your own and uh, learn about for yourself. And so, uh, what I'm talking about is how the United States essentially stole the Philippines from, uh, from Spain. It's a crazy story. It's a crazy story. Right now I'm in front of the uh, Manila Cathedral. Essentially, like in 1898, when the Spanish Empire was crumbling and the Filipino fighters here in the Philippines were fighting for their independence, America came in at the last minute and was like, hmm, we'll, uh, we'll help you out. The Philippines would be a very strategic place for us in the Pacific. And uh, yeah, it would be nice for us if we could, uh, you know, claim it, if we could uh, help out the, the Filipinos. And essentially what they did, they made a pact with Spain because Spain did not want to they knew they were going to lose to the Filipino fighters. They knew they were, they were, uh, their days were numbered. And so they made a pact with America. It's so crazy. They made a pact. Is that a statue? Yeah, I think there's a statue of a person sleeping on a bench. Okay, anyway, let's get distracted. Uh, they made a pact with the Americans and said, hey, we'll have this mock battle here in Manila, somewhere around here, where we will lose and then we will essentially... Uh, give you the Philippines. <laughs> and so at first the Filipinos were like, uh, yeah, America, come help us, you know. But then Americans were like, wait a second, now we can just replace the Spanish and uh, become the Philippine, uh, the Filipinos' new colonizer. And that's essentially what happened. And it's something you don't learn about in school. Uh, the Filipinos are the the, Phili uh, the Philippine fighters in America? They uh, they fought for another two years, but it, it's eventually America won out. Uh, and then for the next uh, 40, 50 years or so, the Philippines were essentially an American uh, colony, and they are kind of uh, under the category, just like Guam and. Uh, the, uh, the Mariana Islands, Puerto Rico, they fall into that same category. They're U.S. citizens, but they don't get all the privileges and they don't get all the rights that ordinary Americans do. They can't vote for president. They, uh, it's really weird. And so it's kind of messed up. It's not weird, it's messed up. And so I have a friend from Guam and uh, maybe I can plug him in real quick and get, give, give you his... Uh, his uh, opinion about it. Hi to everyone, I'm Stephen Lefevre. I'm making this video for my buddy Nick. He asked me about my opinion on America occupying Guam, where I'm from. Um, they've been occupying Guam for quite some time and I feel like I'm not happy with the status quo. A lot of people on Guam are happy with what it is and being feeling like they're safe from, you know, if, if America leaves, China's going to take over and stuff like that. I feel like we should be independent. I feel like, you know, we should just have our own choice to be independent. And 
we don't need to be a military strategic point for America to play their war games around the Asian region. I feel like they should just stay where <laughs> where their land is and not have to have a little you know warfare playground that they do around these islands and in the Philippines and they should just be unto themselves um, this whole idea of China taking over if America leaves I don't feel like that is what China wants to do they don't seem they, they seem like they're they are just concentrated on their land and just building thriving from there and maybe yeah they have Taiwan and whatnot but America is the one that just wants to be all over the place and I want independent status because we haven't been independent since 1695 and we are just being held back from being on the global stage and being um, you know taken seriously with everyone else so if Singapore is the same size as us why can't we have such a status and why can't we be great in that sense we are in America's pockets and we have no say with whatever they want to do in terms of building how many bases they want. They have 35% of the land and they can do whatever they want there. And, you know, with total disregard to, to the environment of Guam and, you know, enjoy, you know, enjoying as they please. So, you know, I feel that there, there should be a change and maybe one day as the sentiment of independence grows. Uh, one ice cream. One ice cream cone. What flavor? Avocado and mango. Apricot? Avocado. Avocado. And mango. And mango. Sounds good to me. I'll take one. Sounds good. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. How much is this? Forty pesos only. Mm. Mango and avocado. Not a bad combination. Ice cream is kind of like chewy. It's interesting texture. Mm. Today I'm going to be doing the Intramuros tour, and so it's one of those things I found out when I got here that you can do and uh, it's free it's uh well it's kind of based off donations obviously and uh, right now I'm just waiting for my group this is Nina she will be uh, she will be providing the, the tour for us today this is Nina and I am actually an intern at Abraham tour so basically I'm still studying they will just basically fall down like this one. this is the picture picture of San Agustin Church back then one by one. So if you need only one egg, you can buy it here. <laughs> okay. Sorry, so much. Thank you, Nina. Wonderful tour. Good job. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. much, sir. You're welcome. Thank you so much. The intramurals tour ends at the top of this hotel, which is kind of cool. You get a kind of a bird's eye view of uh, everything you just explored. And so, uh, I would definitely recommend doing it. It's free. You can just you know give one or two hundred I think as a donation when you're done uh, you get to explore this whole area right here and uh, if you're lucky you get a cute little Filipino girl to show you around so uh, it's actually kind of cool okay so this is the old town of Manila um, that's the church that we started off uh, at way over there you know the tourist it's nice you know she explains the, the ins and outs of this entire place kind of what happened here you know you could do it without her obviously but it's it's nice that she has little details about all the buildings and uh, everything. The very sad part about it though is that pretty much all this in here, all the buildings, they've basically been redone because in uh, 1945 in the Battle of Manila, they were essentially destroyed. And so the only thing that was uh, kept standing was the church and we'll, I'll show you that later. But. Uh, yeah, it's kind of sad. You know, if you go to Jakarta, you go to Kotatua, you go to places like that, you know, you can still see the buildings that have been there for hundreds of years. And it's unfortunate because of uh, war. Now, this is an awesome basketball hoop. 
Check this out. Look how tiny that ring is. Yeah, you got to be pretty accurate to make it in that one. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, did you already fry it? Okay. So uh, we came by here on the tour earlier, and I want to stop by and uh, try some of this food. Uh, is the uh, the pepper is it spicy? Yes. Very spicy. I'll try it. I'll I'll try. It. Yeah. Wonder if she. Uh... Okay. So she does throw it in the uh, the fryer one more time. Kill all the germs, I guess. What is this sauce right here? No, that's for the quail eggs. That's for the quail eggs. Oh, that's like the batter. Yes. Okay, that's the batter. Okay. Okay. So that's just for this, obviously. So what else is inside? The pepper, cheese, cheese and ground pork. Cheese and ground pork, man. Ooh. I bet this is freaking delicious, actually. Mm, mm, thank you. Thank you Definitely let that cool off for a second. What do uh, what do you like to eat? Mayo ketchup. Mayo ketchup? Okay. Okay, just a little bit of that. That's enough, that's enough. Alrighty, let's try the dynamite. It's pretty dang tasty. Hopefully it's not too hot. Mm. Super crunchy. Now spice is a little delayed though. It's coming. But yeah, you can definitely taste the pepper. Wow, that's good. That is freaking good. Kinda reminds me of like a hot chili cheese egg roll. Yeah, best way to describe it, I think. Ooh. Hot, those juices just fly out. Yes, sir. Hi. Hello. I'm going in. A little bit of everything fried chicken, fish, veggies. Mm -hmm. What is this? This is uh, chicken curry. curry. Chicken curry? Yes. That sounds delicious. So, chicken curry, maybe some rice? With rice? With, with rice, I'll serve it Okay. That's what I want. Right. Yes, please. Actually, I don't, really, I don't really know how this works. This is very similar to uh, Indonesia, right? Where you just like make a bunch of food in a place and then you just set it out and you go and you just kind of pick what you want. My kind of eating. Mm. That looks extra creamy. That is good. Got some chicken in there. A little salty, but masada. All right. In the Filipino language, they were just telling me delicious is masada, and in Malaysia, in Malaysian, you say it's sada. So very similar, right? Hey! <laughs> Man, it is hot as fill in the blank. It is smoking out here. Oh man, I'm a good 13,000 steps into the day. It's about time to wrap this video up and call it a day. Uh, there was a there was a few other things I want to talk about real quickly before I wrap the video up. A few closing remarks, if you may. So I'd have to say that the Philippines, more than any other country I've visited, by far has more American tourists. You know, uh, when I tell people oh, I'm from, I'm from America, I'm from the United States, they're never surprised. They're like, oh, okay, cool. But 
when I was in Indonesia, when I was in Malaysia, in India, wherever, a lot of times they're like, oh, wow, okay, you know, like they're a little bit surprised, but here, not at all. <laughs> and so, which makes me wonder, like going back to the beginning of the video, do a lot of the American tourists that come here, do they realize the history between the Philippines and America? Do they realize that America essentially just stole uh, the Philippines from from Spain and essentially from the freedom fighters that were fighting for their independence here uh, I'm guessing not because like I said you weren't you weren't taught this uh, in school well, at least I wasn't I'm pretty sure not many others are taught this as well and so you know and one thing that's pretty shocking and you know surprising is that even during World War II and when J when Japan striked Pearl Harbor that same day they attacked here in the Philippines and in Guam even and so you don't learn about that you just you you hear about the attack on Pearl Harbor and that's it not a peep about I'm gonna get away from those speakers not a peep about uh, the Philippines or Guam two other places that the Japanese attacked that day and so it's crazy even in the speech that FDR wrote and gave to the, uh, you know, uh, gave to the American public that day, he had scratched out the Philippines on the uh, on the rough draft of the speech, and so the initial speech was like, you know, on this day we were the the, the United States, Oahu, and the Philippines were attacked, but he had crossed out the Philippines because, you know, I hate to sound like a cynic or you know sound you know be this way but yeah there's a uh, is very racially motivated I think and uh, you know these weren't white Americans over here that were uh, living in the Philippines and so and they weren't, weren't even considered citizens in a way they can't even vote for president like Guam and Puerto Rico and the other territories that America still claims and so it's it's all kind of messed up, man. This person has the right idea. Even though he's clean and he's probably nice and uh, cool in that water, man. It's hot here. Like It's like 94 degrees, 94 to 97 every single day. But I think that's just about going to do it for this video. It's hot. I want to go home. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. More to come from uh, the Philippines and Manila. I'm going to try to hang out with Gabe again, maybe go see another basketball game, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, thanks for all your comments and uh, all the new subscribers that I'm getting here in the Philippines. I love it. So more to come. See you guys later, guys. Peace.